so I was looking at my desk today and I found this little painting, this watercolor painting I'd done a, quite a few years ago. Um, I can get it far enough away from the camera. And it's just a little porcupine nestled under a log under a big tree. Uh, kind of waiting out a rainy day, seeing what's going on. So I wanted to turn this into a pencil sketch. And just for fun, I thought I'd take you guys with me. So basically the format of this picture is we've got our third line, which will be at the bottom. Third line on the right for the tree. And then the porcupine will also be kind of in line with that tilted third line here. Um, the reason we want to do everything in thirds is thirds is just very pleasing to the eye. So we'll start. I hear my chickens outside. They're going crazy today. All right. So the picture itself will probably take up about this area. And so let's just start out. We'll block out that tree a little bit. I've just got a pretty big 4B pencil. Um, so it's going to be quite dark. Go ahead and use just the side of it. As you pull it along, we want that nice angle so it kind of frames in the picture. It doesn't have to be super duper perfect. And we'll go. I should say there's no such thing as perfection when it comes to sketching. Everything is movable, provided your paper is a good enough quality and you haven't like rubbed the graphite straight into it. Because um, then you'll damage the paper and you won't be able to make changes the way you want. All right, so that's a basic flow of that tree. We've got a little, here's the top of that little fallen log. I can put a little, little broken branch there. And then it'll kind of be real, real light will do the top of the hole. And then in the hole itself, inside tucked in that log, I'll do a bit of a circle for the face, head, and we'll do two eyes. And here I'll use the tip of my pencil. Let me turn on this light, see if it, no, you can't really tell. All right, never mind. And do just a little eye there. So they're almond shaped here. I make mine kind of like human eyes. Filling out most of it except for that little highlight dot so you can see which direction he's looking. Or she. Make the other one. Here, a little tilted. We want that same thing with that little bit of a highlight there. Just kind of poking its head up looking for the rain to stop. Here the kids are having fun with the sitter today. And it's funny because you know you hear the kids going crazy and that is definitely the reason why I haven't been doing these tutorials. As I feel like it's more frustrating to know that they're in the background, but finally realize that, you know what? I think everyone who's got kids understands <laughs> and maybe even enjoys a little bit of chatter from little ones in the back. All right. Here's this little nose, this little mouth. Um, and then we're going to just start adding in some shading. He's so got some shading here. You got a little, little paws. Half circle paws sticking out there. Just... And you know, is this an anatomically correct porcupine? No. Um, again, we're going off of a painting that I made that I'm pretty sure I just made up out of my head, so. I wouldn't worry too much. We're more focusing on some shading here. We've got some lighter shading. 
and the overall composition, of course, as well. You want darker shading under its eyes, and then a little bit of lighter where the light's hitting it there. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and just start your pencil on the paper, and then as you pull it, you know, outwards, you'll also be lifting it from the paper, and that's what's going to give you that kind of tapered look. And you don't have to worry too much about them being super straight, like unless a porcupine is actually like on defense. Ribbon is actually a bit more smoothed out than even you see in this picture. So we'll just give them some shape, that way you know it's a porcupine. Of course he's got little ears too that I forgot to put in, so we'll have a little dark shading there for a couple of little ears. And let's add some shading here for his little body. There's his little arms coming out. The only part we're kind of leaving blank is going to be his front feet. So keep those circles open and you know maybe you want to put in a couple of little toes there just so just so you can tell. All right. Looking so cute. All right. So again we're just using light you know we're not on the very tip of the pencil. Um, Kind of circular motion. Keep it looking light and fluffy. All right. So then, we got our porcupine. Now what we want to do is start kind of getting these trees a little, a little more defined. So first thing, we've got some space here, and that's because I was thinking of adding some ferns. So I'll add the ferns, the base of them. Seriously, do you hear how crazy my little, my toddler is? He is at a stage where he loves to show. It's so fun for him. You could be angry, you could be happy, he just wants to shout. <laughs> so that's really exciting. We talked about inside voices, but I think the biggest thing is, you know, he doesn't, kids don't think in terms of where they are. They think in terms of how they're feeling um, like they're very they're very real right they're not fake at this age they're real they want to they feel loud they feel boisterous they want to share that it doesn't matter if they're in the house like they haven't learned these social constructs that we've made for them yet just running back and forth lightly here with this pencil kind of jady almost as if you were doing a pine tree right Nice spruce, nice balsam. Just going back and forth. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that I actually really enjoy about the little ones at this point is just kind of using it as an opportunity, using their <laughs> not socially constructed world, you know, as an opportunity to question my own. You know, why? When I feel I should act a certain way around certain people, you know, is that is that out of respect for them? Is you know, is it because I feel uncomfortable? Is it because I'm scared? Is it you know, like why are these? Why do we act different ways around different people and different places? You know, um, does it hinder me from being genuine? Am, am I am I keeping myself from being real? From being honest? From sharing my humanity with another person because I feel like I should act a certain way? Well, these are all great questions that I think we just we don't ask enough because it's been so drilled into our heads at this point that when you're <laughs> when you're inside you don't shout <laughs> um, I don't know just something to think on you know especially as we work with this nature these nature pictures you know animals have their own social constructs as well like you know, there's a way that you behave if you watch a wolf pack, you know, or learn about them. Um, 
there's a way that you behave around the pack and a way that you don't behave and you know around the alpha versus the you know the submissive ones you know who gets to do what um, so yeah I think certainly it's you know part of having a society and making it work for everyone right we don't just cause chaos doing whatever the heck we feel like it um, but at the same time again just questioning that like is it is a construct that's that's good that's beneficial that helps me to grow as a human person I don't know all right so we got our ferns in there um let's get on this log here so we'll get some dark shading on the bottom we've got kind of we assume the sun is coming in through here from there Sorry, I had to check to see what my dog was doing. She thought there was a delivery, but it was just someone driving past. All right, so when you're doing you know, trees, logs in this style, make sure you're leaving those highlights. Don't try to color it all in. And I like to keep things a little bit more jaggedy. You know, make sure you can see where's that grain of wood, where's that texture from, you know, the rotting, the rotting log or bark whatever here we can add a little bit more of a definition because it's kind of getting lost in that fern area all right and here I'm gonna start adding some depth behind there so I just go in one way with your pencil again on the side and then press a little more firmly you're still not destroying the paper right? you're still being gentle with into with your paper. Just kind of pull in that shadow. Already right? sitting in the hole. You don't need to draw everything that's in the hole. This is a simple picture. We want it to end right there. We want to know where the ground is. All right. And don't feel like you need to get all perfectiony with the quills as well. I think it's, it's all right. It's all right to leave it like that, as you can see. Kind of go, I think, maybe to here with this shading. And we'll just kind of let it drift off. Maybe lighten it up a little bit if you wanted. But we're always going in that same direction because when we start uh, mixing it all together, you'll see it's really important. Okay, and I, of course, I'm going around, but the exception would be right here, so that way we don't run over the quills. Go ahead and just run in the direction of the quills, just to the tip, and then go back to your original direction. All right. My pencil's running out, and I cannot for the life of me find my pencil sharpener today. So that's awesome. I actually couldn't find my pencil box at all. I have no idea. I've been on a minimalist binge, you know, trying to keep things clean and organized. It's fall, I need to get my winter stuff out, and a lot of stuff has disappeared as a result. All right, so I've got that. Now let's go ahead and keep working on this bark. You know, go ahead and add some. Maybe a little bit more of the tip of the pencil, some harder strokes around the edge. Ditto for here, we want this to really stand out. I'm really putting some pressure on that, on that area. And then going right here. Again, it's just kind of jaggedy, that's fine. All right, and that we're gonna use the same kind of jagged straight lines um, for the tree back here. So I'll just go ahead and go like that. Sometimes I like to run my uh, tree lines up and down. That way I kind of know where I'm going. From a big picture perspective, and then I can just fill it in. It's nice because it's super quick, you know, to do it this way. Got your shading on the sides without making it an outline, right? I'm gonna have something going on, something interesting. Not just like a flat outline. All right. okay. I know which one of the lines, you know, you want those highlights running through the tree again. I'm able to be 
able to see the bark. Um, but the hot, the pretty much the farther I get from this area, the more kind of, I don't know, the more white space I'll leave. Because we don't care, we don't want the eye to be drawn up here with, you know, a bunch of little detailed stuff. I just kind of stay, stay in the center of the picture. As you can see, I'm not really following. Kind of made some deviations from those original lines I put in. Um, just as the shading is taking shape. Um, and you want to give yourself the freedom to do that. All right. So I take a look at. Oh, sorry, bumping it. All right. I think that looks nice. That will do. I've got this giant like paper rubber. I know there's an official name for it and I have no idea what it is. Um, but you're just going to take the edge of it and you're going to kind of rub it around these areas here. And shading. So you're going to do it first. And you can do it with the, you know, your finger, but the tip on this allows you to get a lot more detailed and you know, where you're pulling it, how much pressure you're putting on. It's a really, really nice way to kind of smooth out those areas that you have. More or less detail depending on the picture. So I'm going to run it along the areas that are shaded the most. And, you know, making sure that you're still keeping these, these sharp definition lines. Like you don't want to rub everything out. You'll end up with a very flat sketch. Like this. And up, down. Here we go. And the last thing, I'm actually gonna, well, I'll do a little tiny bit here on this, this guy. Mostly just here under his chin. A little bit around kind of this body area. Not too much. Under by his nose. Alright, the last bit we'll do here before the kids start venturing into the art room. So let's just get these ferns a little bit. And pull a tree up to them. And just do the center. I wouldn't do, go too far out under the tips. Um, I'll go ahead and blur it a little bit, make it kind of misty. You know, at the base. There you go. A cute little, go ahead and sign your name. And you've got a cute little sketch of a porcupine and, and a tree. And you know, go ahead and play with it. You know, if you want to make these more defined, go for it. And maybe make some smoother things. Um, make the more smoother, that'd be great.